from the vault, high atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Welcome back to another episode of Talking Catholic. It's Carrie Janice here, and I'm here with my good friend Mike Walsh, who is once again down in the Williamstown area visiting yeah, with me this and is nice. our guest. I, I was thinking about it the, this uh, earlier this week that I think I've now done more podcasts in your uh, uh, young adult lounge than we've done in the vault. Mm. Which uh, I don't know how I feel about that actually. On one I feel hand, good I, about it. Yeah, I know you feel good about it, but on one hand, I'm like, oh, I kind of miss the vault because it scares everybody. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it is so lovely and welcoming, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, Mike, for coming down. So. You know, it's nice to have you in my area, and I, I don't like the vault. You know that. We've heard about this before, so I don't want to bore our listeners with that. But, it's not boring. We like hearing um, about your spirit. <laughs> I'm glad that uh, you're here. It's it's comfortable here, and um, I just enjoy being in, in my, my office and spending time here with our guests, so thanks thanks for coming out yeah, to Williamstown. No problem. Down. Actually, both uh, John Kalitz, who has been on, the episode, been on the show once before on our hockey episode mm. uh, with uh, Johnny Hockey, uh, Johnny Goudreau, um, he, uh, he and I both left the office at the same time. And I realized I've basically followed him down for 20 yep. miles, right? And I didn't realize, wow, he lives very Yeah, I could throw like a rock to his house from here. Yeah, yeah. he's a good guy. The uh, No, but it's it's lovely. And uh, we're actually having a conversation about one of my favorite topics today. Yes, mine as well. Very something close to my heart. It is about our Stockton Campus Ministry. So CCM, Catholic Campus Ministry at Stockton. And uh, we have a couple campus ministries around our diocese. So um, we also have Rowan, Newman Club, and campus ministry there at in Glassboro run by Rebecca Hardy and Father Rossi and then also at stock excuse me at Camden Rutgers Camden we have Sister Dorothy running that as well so yeah, three so around our diocese and we're focusing on one today Stockton. And, and one of the good things that the Catholic Church does is and diocese across the country they really promote these Catholic campus ministries as an opportunity for for making sure that our youngsters who choose not to go to a Catholic institution mm-hmm. like I did at St. Joseph's University, uh, but decided oh, to go okay. to. Okay, a- you're, you're better than all of us. <laughs> thanks, right. Mike. Uh, That's thanks right. for letting that be known oh, right man, from the start. There's nothing better than uh, hanging with the Jesuits at midnight mass uh, mm-hmm. on a Sunday and uh, during the school year. But um, it was, uh, but you know, certainly you credit your formation with the, the pa- big part. Yes. With with your time at Catholic Campus Ministry, and I've mentioned it on the show before that uh, my wife often credits her time um, in Catholic Campus Ministry in college as something that was able to to keep her focused and not pulled away from the church when during a time period when uh, young adults often will move away they their faith sure and yeah they, they're out of they they've moved usually they've moved out of their parents house and they've met new people mm-hmm. and they're going in new directions and oftentimes have moved out of their area that they've grown grown up in and there's all this newness and it's very easy for them to find something else to do other than go to, say, Mass on a Sunday. That's for sure. And I'm sure that's where I, the good work of the campus ministers and the executive board and the students that help run that committee and, and the group is so important. That's some of our guests yeah. here today with us. Yeah, so let's go around the table and introduce who's here. Hi, I am Allison Filio, and I'm the director of campus ministry at Stockton. Hi, I'm Catherine Sindana, and I'm the secretary. I am Dom Villanueva, and I am the president of Newman Club at Stockton. And just out of curiosity for our two college students, uh, what years are you in at Stockton? I am currently a junior. Also a junior. Okay. Oh, great. So you've you got your feet wet. You have your time, you know, three years in, but you still got some time to go in serving and also in being around the campus ministry. And Stockton's one of our prettier, one of the prettier oh. campuses you'll ever go to prettiest Newman Center that you'll ever uh, go to. That's yes. true as well. One of the few campuses that have a, a properly dedicated Newman Center, and uh, yeah, that's a good point. It's that gorgeous. Is gorgeous, yeah. They should. I hope that's on the the tour of uh, Stockton. It's uh, just at stop by the uh, the Newman Center because uh, it is probably one of the prettiest places on the campus itself. Oh yeah. Well, is it actually on the campus? It is like or two camp- miles down the road okay. from campus. So that's the only unfortunate. Um, part about it it's a beautiful building but the way stockton set up in the pineland pinelands pinelands Pinelands, yeah um sorry the way i say that word is odd (laughs) um but it being so far from campus sometimes it's difficult for students to get Mm. there so it it makes some of the ministry challenging sure especially for students who don't have vehicles yeah i can see that so 
but the, the the building itself is gorgeous. I guess it's owned by the diocese. Yep, they, it's a diocese building. Do you know what that building is? It's kind of new looking. It's beautiful. I think it was built around 2001. Okay, so in the early 2000s. 20 years old. Yeah. Really gorgeous. Uh, dedicated chapel. Jesus is always mm-hmm. there. I know we. My ministry has spent some time doing mm-hmm. retreats there, and we really ugh, they call it their home away from home. So we all love it there. So, uh, what 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 other things does it offer yeah, for I the guess, students? Let's, let's just jump our, right into our, it. Our right? best first question is: What is Catholic Campus yeah, Ministry yeah. For, for our listeners who don't understand it? <laughs> Um, Catholic, Campus, <laughs> Catholic Campus Ministry is an outreach. Um, I know, Carrie, you were a part of a Newman Club at Rowan mm-hmm. in your time, and I went to a Catholic college um, in Maryland, but um, they had campus ministry too. So it's a, you know, there's Catholic Campus Ministry. We offer mass, the sacraments. We offer formation activities, retreats each, each semester, and hopefully are a place where um, our presence leads students to encounter Christ. Mm. I think that that's the main goal is, you know, to be there, to be present, um, to hopefully help college students encounter the Lord. Mm-hmm. And you do that by regular meetings and events, uh, both on campus and at the center itself. You know, so- in my time at Stockton, each semester has been different. And so. We offer daily mass at least once a week on campus. We have our Sunday mass and like a family dinner afterwards. Mm -hmm. We have a Wednesday night meeting. Um, I've offered Bible studies. We've, you know, we have semesterly retreats. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it differs based upon the need of the students. And I think a lot of, you know, what Catholic campus ministry does and a lot of what I do is informal. It's those informal encounters where, um, You know, I see a student, I say, hello, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, how's your day? Like getting to know on on that purely human level and that those encounters lead to like the deeper conversations where the formation happens. For sure. Yeah. You know, I even see that in youth ministry as well. And it's it's interesting in our world today, in our society today, where everyone is so plugged into their phone and, of course, on a college campus, plugged into their studies or the other involvements that they have on campus. I can imagine that that hello goes a whole lot, a, a whole long way with that student. And you're just remembering their name and yeah. having a conversation with them. They remember me. You know, that yeah. could definitely go a long way. I could see how that really can change their day for sure. Yeah, I always try to remember everyone's name, but um, mom brain is a real thing. Okay. So <laughs> I don't have as as much of an ability. But you know, it's funny, the Lord will, will remind me. Just a couple nights ago, I woke up in the middle of the night remembering this girl I met at our outreach in the fall. Wow. And so I just said like a quick prayer for her by name. And, you know, I'm praying that I'll see her this week when we do our outreach. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but the Holy Spirit, you know, will you know, always oh, yeah. brings it you, up. I actually was, I had a youth minister meeting earlier today and we were talking about calling people by name. And that's why it's kind of fresh in my mind. But I said to them, Father Maz taught me this and it really has given me, I, I feel like it really has helped a lot. And that is, I pray to remember names. Mm-hmm. I ask God, give mm-hmm. me the, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, remember their names because mm-hmm. it makes such a difference. And I'm always mm-hmm. like, Oh, when I can't remember it, I'm like, I really wish I had a, had their name right now. And sometimes it just comes to you, you know, and I'm yeah. like, there's the Holy Spirit kicking yep. in from those prayers. So, but mom brain is real. I, I'm with you on that for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, so some of the things you mentioned, uh, meetings and dinners, and I'd like to hear from some of the students, what is it that has drawn you into the Newman Center, maybe first to begin with? And what are some of the things that you like about its offerings at the Newman Club? So maybe we'll start with Dom. Our president, top, the okay. chief. Okay, I was gonna hope for ladies first, but that's fine. <laughs> um, well, I guess the thing that, that's kind of hard to think about. Like, I started going to Newman way before I even started going to Stockton, actually. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, I believe she was on this podcast, Jessica Gettings, at oh, one sure, point. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she brought me to Newman many, many years ago, and, uh, before I even was Catholic, really? and yeah, she can she kept me going and. Okay, that, so we got to hear about that. That now. very much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now hey, we're to talk about. <laughs> um, but uh. So how old were you when you started? Were you college age at the time? Eighteen. 
19? No, when I started coming to Stockton, I think I was like 22-ish, 21, somewhere around okay. there. Yeah. Um, and then I believe like a year and a half after I started going to Newman is when I actually started going to Stockton. Um, Attending the university itself. Yes. So you bring a good point then that you don't necessarily have to be a student at Stockton to attend the Newman Club or the Newman yeah. Gathering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great um, to it's, know. It's open to everyone, you know. Um, but I, I went through a long period of just kind of going like before I was before I was Catholic, um, kind of going to mass uh, with different people with Jess with uh, my now godmother uh, Jen and um, over the years I kind of realized that like I just don't I want to actually attend mass mm -hmm. I want to receive and after after uh, there was a point in time where I moved to New York a little bit and when I moved to New York that's when I really studied upon the faith I started studying like different religions and I started uh Every question that I had, I it was answered inevitably by Catholicism. Wow. So. And this was on your own, just some yeah. research you did and looking into it. Yeah. Um, so then I moved back to Jersey, and then that's when I started going to Newman Club, and then like halfway through Newman Club is when I started going to RCIA at Our Lady Star of the Sea in the city, and then from then on, on the Easter you were came baptized? quick, and yeah, I think I'm like three. I always look at you. <laughs> I always look at Allie because she knows better than I do. Um, so I'm three years old soon. So. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. And now you're the president of the new... And now I'm the president. I'm in this leadership position and wow. I have no idea when I'm... The no, I'm just kidding. Um, he's but yeah. humble, but he's great. Yeah. Uh, I've only known you now two months and I've only seen great things from you. So I'm oh, sure the Holy Spirit you. is working... Overtime in that three uh, years are ready for you. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, thanks. What a great story. And I'm sure yeah. the, the campus ministry had a lot to do with leading you there. The Holy Spirit It's true, yeah. The, all of those friends that I made, um, I'm still very close with them now. Uh, like I saw them all for New Year's, like every single one of them, mm. you know, and that's, it's just, I guess that's the, the great part about Newman is that there are everlasting relationships and bonds and essentially family that are developed from yes. Newman even after everyone I is gone agree and graduated. I can't agree with you more, yeah. I'm, so, I'm almost 20 years out of college. Well, when am I? In 2004. We just went over your age, like I know, three episodes no, but I'm, now I'm college. I was just about to ask. <laughs> 16 I know years out of college. Rude. 16 years out of college. And these so are some like, of my closest friends or my new friends. Don't do it. No. We, we were it's, talking uh, about her It's age. over and done with. Actually, come <laughs> to think of it, yesterday was your birthday. It was, yes. Well, we're, okay, so we're recording this. <gasps> Happy yeah. belated yes. birthday. Thanks. So we're recording this uh, several weeks before it's going to post. So, yeah, yeah. Your, your birthday was what, the 22nd? 121. Tw 121. Feast to see an Agnes, yeah. There you it was go. A good day. It was a good and, day. And uh, you're a young 29, right? Yeah, something like that. There you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, and 16 years out of college. So, um, <laughs> but those are some of my closest friends and, and deepest relationships. You're right. And we were in each other's weddings and we're each other's God, you know, for our children, godparents. Yeah. So it really shows how the faith, those friendships run so much deeper than just a surface level. Yeah. So that, that seems true and, for you. And honestly, that, that brings up another point that we've talked about in a couple of different shows. And it's actually almost kind of feels like a theme in the last six months, even before you, you joined as a co-host, mm -hmm. which was um, the power of community. Oh, and, and, yeah. and, and with regard to our faith, I mean, it's very easy for us to, to become isolated um, in our lives in general. Um, but even in our prayer life, it's very easy to become isolated in your prayer life. Um, and if there's one thing I've noticed now that, you know, I'm in deep middle age and I look back on time and see the, and see the changes that have occurred, I feel like we don't see these communal opportunities occur in our faith as often. When I was young in the 70s and 80s growing up, you know, the parishes, my parish in particular, had a ton of events going on. And I, I, I mean, I remember them very strongly in my mind. Um, and nowadays, if you have a parish that still has a lot of events, you know, there is still that sense of the community. But if you have a parish that doesn't have a lot of those opportunities, um, you know, that sense of community is lost and you find yourself kind of floundering. That's absolutely something that can happen to a young person sure. at college, too, where you do become, even though you're surrounded by, depending on the college, 10,000 people, sure. mm -hmm. you may feel very isolated. Mm -hmm. And to have a group like this where you can come together, not only 
express your your faith, but discuss your faith. You know, I, th- this I've talked about this a couple times in the past, but one of the absolutely most joyous opportunity uh, moments in, in for my wife and I was sitting at a diner in Glassboro, and uh, it was just a Sunday night, and it was after the Sunday night mass at St. Bridget's in mm-hmm. Glassboro. And uh, we were there, and we were having dinner with our, at that time, uh, very young son. And this group of four college kids came in and sat at a table near us, and they launched into an entire discussion about the philosophy relating to Catholicism and all the different, like, I mean, d- like, right down to what the Eucharist is, when it becomes wow. the Eucharist, the power of the Eucharist, all the stuff. And they here they are, sitting at a yeah. diner, having this conversation uh, uh, very publicly. And my wife turns to me, and she goes, Mike, they're getting it wrong. No. <laughs> Should we tell them? And and uh, look, please and, tell me you went over to the no, table. No, actually, just the opposite. And I fe- and I felt very strongly about this. Yeah. It was important that they were there amongst themselves, having this conversation, okay. and 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 go, doing a deep dive on something. And I actually felt like we would have ruined it. We would have mm. ruined the moment, even if we had. And by the way, they weren't getting it wrong, as in they were going down a path of you know heresy. They were getting it wrong in in the sense that you know we would talk about it more articulately. And they were just talking it very okay. basically. But it was important that they were having that and they were jazzed up and they were yeah. really invested in it. That's and awesome. so when my wife asked you, I said, no, 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 let, the, let them have the conversation and let other people see them having mm. the conversation. Mm-hmm. And so it, it made my day. Did I've, you pay for their dinner? <laughs> we, were a little, we were a little poor back then. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we did not pay for their dinner. But I you mean, know what? You know, any college student would love Actually, a free meal. Actually, hindsight being 2020, that's the first time I'm, this has gone from a very positive story, Carrie, to now a negative story. Because now I feel bad. <laughs> That we didn't pay for their dinner. <laughs> I ruined it. That is a good. This point. is why we're here for each other. Yes, we, you yeah. know. I wish you had been in like the like to throw jabs. Ja- like at <laughs> more my age like, and I wish you were. Maybe I need you as uh, tapping my guardian angel on the shoulder and say, "Hey, hey, he's he needs to do more." Because I don't go. do that enough. But there that's a, but that, but seriously, that sense of community is really really yeah. important. And I'm glad that you, particularly for our young students, that that, that we've that they found a community yeah, that, like that. And that's what Newman does, right? You you mentioned free meals. We were talking about free meals. How college students love it you guys offer that there thanks uh, Ali yeah. <laughs> yeah that was part of uh, the job when I signed on was to cook the Sunday night oh so you're <laughs> cooking them I am the oh, chef so that's awesome what do you offer um you know whatever strikes me that morning <laughs> so it's actually like kind it. of fun I, I'm not I'm not a bad cook but it's not like oh I can't wait to get in the kitchen and yeah. you know I do it because my family has to eat but um, <laughs> my three year old son loves to cook oh, wow. and so now it's become this thing where like he'll come every weekend in the kitchen with me and, and he does it during the week too he'll help me cook like you know, he knows we only use the knives together, but um, <laughs> like he mixes stuff, he sautés, like it's really kind of crazy, wow. but it's That's it's adorable. become one of my um, fun little Give him a few more things. years and you you can sign off. And I was thinking about on. that yesterday yeah. as I walked into the house. I thought, you know, in a couple of years I won't have to cook dinner tonight. Yeah, I could just be like, I'm awesome. tired. <laughs> Joseph, go. <laughs> <laughs> that is great, actually. So, Kathy, we did get to hear from you and, and what you love about the Newman Center. And what brought you to it? So um, actually, I was I'm very involved in the youth ministry here. Um, I was part of the high school youth group, and a little bit in like the middle school youth group. But I really wanted here that at our lady here at parish. yes okay. at our parish here, um, and I really wanted that included in my college experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a little difficult for me to get involved at first because I commute and it's about 45 minutes from here. Okay, um, so. That was kind of difficult for me, but what really started getting me involved is uh, going on retreat. Mm. So retreats have always been something that just have been like a key part of my faith. And being able to go on retreats with um, the Stockton Newman Club, and then we started uh, actually having retreats together with uh, Stockton, Rowan, and Rutgers, like all together. So Mm -hmm. that's been really great. I'm looking forward to the one coming up, but... Yeah, and so it's like once a semester. Once a semester. Them. There's one retreat per semester, yes. Great. Where, yeah. where are you going for this retreat? The, <laughs> we do the um, so the fall semester that each school does their own retreat. It's a time a chance for us to kind of develop our own communities. But then in the spring we come and have a diocesan campus ministry retreat. This year we're having it at the Kairos Retreat Center at Holy Spirit High School. 
Wow, it's great. not too far from your campus, probably, right? It's Was not it too far from us. And, you know, minutes? it's affordable. We don't have to say no to anybody because there's a lot of rooms. Um, and I think it was newly renovated, so yep. it offers a lot for our diocese, from what I'm told. Have you been there yet? We used it last year, okay. yep. yeah. Yeah, so I yeah. it was that's nice. A, that's a future podcast topic, by the way, that we should look into. There it that, is. That Kairos Retreat Center is mm-hmm. amazing. I, I hope every diocese has one. If they don't, they should. Because having someplace in the diocese where you can host a retreat, and that is a... Uh, that's a great facility, so we'll, yeah, we'll tease that it. one for I this I hear one. about it from a lot of the, the teens that go on it with their Catholic high schools going on Kairos. Yeah. So I've heard about it through yeah. them. So you were saying? <laughs> See yeah, retreats. So, so retreats really got me involved. And in general, as a commuter, it's it's a mainly commuter school, but it's really hard to get involved as a commuter mm. just because, like... Yeah. It's an you, age-old story. I yeah, always hear that. Yes. Yeah, when you live on campus, like, you're right there. It's like at most a 10 minute walk Mm -hmm. you know but as a commuter it's a 45 minute drive for me so Mm -hmm. you know if I have classes in the morning and I don't have anything else in the afternoon it it was really difficult for me to get there thankfully now I can I can get there and make myself present but yeah so um, I made most of my friends there as well um, if not all of my friends, to be honest. <laughs> hey, hey, don't forget your roots here. Oh, listen, yes. <laughs> of course. But I think no. she means her friends at Stockton. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My Stockton, Stockton friends. Got my Stockton got friends. college friends. <laughs> she got well, you know that, it, <laughs> right? I gotta keep it real. No, you know that. Um, you know that that that's a good point because that community is gonna foster that. That's gonna foster those friendships. You're spending a lot of time with them. You're going away on weekend retreats with them. You're encountering your with prayer and mass. I mean, that's that makes sense. That some of your closest friends if not all of them have been through this community yeah definitely and you know each like young adult group gives me something different that i that Mm -hmm. i is necessary sure like this group here at our lady of peace uh gives me something i need as well as stockton Mm -hmm. something i need so yeah that's great have you done any service experiences with them i know they've offered um different mission trips and all have you partake either of you partake in any of them i have not did you dumb um Mission trips. Oh yeah, Texas. I forgot about that one. <laughs> <laughs> kind of big, huh? <laughs> the other reason why I was on this podcast was because of Texas. <laughs> so what was in um, Texas? Oh man, here we go again. <laughs> um, so what we did in Texas was essentially um, we're we're helping those um, like directly on the border. So where we were, we were at the. I actually don't think it's there anymore. You were you were down the respite so, center. Yeah, the uh, Sister Dorothy Pimentel's respite center in yeah. Callan, Texas, um, which uh, at the time uh, was helping uh, people who had crossed the border uh, illegally and had been apprehended by the mm-hmm. government. And at the t- at the uh, heyday of her of her respite center, what they would do is when those people were eventually released uh, from custody and given summonses to appear at court, they were allowed to stay with in yeah, the United yeah. States. And her respite center would actually help get them sort of oriented, tell them what to do, where to go. There would be translators. Oftentimes, it was the first shower they had had in weeks. Mm-hmm. They would they were able to care for the children for a little bit, have a proper meal, and then get good instructions about what to do next, so that when their court date appeared, they could go and 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 be their court. And they would go across the country. They would they would they would go everywhere. Over time, uh, with the change in the administration, the uh, the the work of her respite center changed and and with people no longer coming across the border in great numbers uh, the respite center has now sort of changed into a um, as opposed to taking care of people who have come into the United States now they are going across the border in McAllen to Mexico Mm -hmm. and working with people who are in these tent cities that are now on the the Mexico border so what time what what and what part of that time period did uh, did you visit? So I I went my first time that I went because I went two times, and the last time when I was here was when I was talking about the first time. Mm-hmm. So the first time the respite center was actually like super super small. Um, the second time I went, it was moved to a different location and it was like expanded. It was like yeah, huge, enormous. Um, I believe, if I remember correctly, I believe it was like an old nursing home. Yep. And then they converted it into a into this gigantic place and one room that I was specifically uh, assigned to uh, with my good friend Lauren is we were we were in the toy room <laughs> and all of like the kids would just come into the room and uh, I would translate for for Lauren because uh, 
Puerto Ricans. And um, <laughs> I, like, it was just such a wholesome experience to be able to, like, do that. Like, a lot of them were, like, little girls that would come in and they want to play, like, with dolls and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So they went towards Lauren a lot more. Yeah. But, like, they would look at me, say something, and then I would say something to Lauren, like, yeah. to translate. Like, tell her, and was, tell yeah. her. <laughs> and it was just, it was just such a great experience. But Oh, that's good. I'm sure that really helped impact. Yeah. your faith in a deep way yep. yeah and if if you know if our listeners want to learn more about that we've actually had multiple episodes where we talk about mm-hmm. uh the border uh, our catholic charities in uh in the diocese of camden sent down um, more than a dozen pilgrimages to the border with more than 10 or more people on every uh every pilgrimage to 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 really just sort of learn about what was going on down there firsthand so mm-hmm. they can make their own sort of judgments as to yeah. what was being handled and, and if you listen to some of those they're very moving oftentimes there's some tears because what they saw sure. was so powerful yeah. mm-hmm. so it was great that, that you joined them twice yeah. Yeah. Fact, yeah, it's good that the, the college there. can offer those experiences to yeah. you as well you know you wouldn't get that in everyday experiences yeah. in, to that level to that magnitude I'm sure what you, what you felt it and saw yeah. it and like I guess one of the parts of how that affected Newman Club was um, it truly I guess, uh, like, it pierced me with, with the word uh, service. Mm-hmm. Like, being of service to others was, was something that I especially had to learn for this coming semester, um, was that even though, because now that all the people that I grew up like in Newman with they, they're no longer around they're like graduating and stuff mm-hmm. so it Into is a little bit yeah, like, so it's difficult it's a difficult adaptation but one of the things that keeps me going on is the fact that I am of service to others mm-hmm. you know and I'm in this leadership position because I want you know if I at least help one person you know come to the faith or help one person grow in their faith it was worth it yeah you know and awesome. if anything like Texas was one of those things that kind of helped me with that was realizing that just making one person smile down there was mm-hmm. just the greatest success Small you could ever choice, have so yeah. that's great now for the positions that you guys are in the president and secretary for each of you are those elected positions or appointed positions how does that work in the or does do allison do you appoint them you know, it's a it's kind of a mixture of everything. So people who would want to serve on the executive board express interest in the spring, mm-hmm. um, and then we receive feedback from um, the members, and then through prayer and discernment and kind of talking about what each student's gifts and talents are, uh, our chaplain, Father Raymond, and I um, kind of make the final decision t- where we incorporate all of it, People, what people desire, what other members have said okay. and what their you know natural gifts and talents are. I like that because when I was at Newman back again in the day as we talked about <laughs> it was like elected by your peers and mm-hmm. like I felt like I gave this really good speech one year it was like my junior year and then this other kid came in like out of nowhere he wasn't even involved and he like just blew this speech out of the water like drummed it up with music and all this stuff and i was like are you kidding me and he got elected and i mm. I was like so upset and, that, and that visibly upset because i couldn't hold back tears at that point <laughs> and they actually like created a position for me because they're like okay she kind of deserves this because she's been around she's given to the club this kid came in and now you know what just happened here we were like all yeah. kind of thrown for a loop and so they created a position for me at that point and yeah. i like the way you do it so much better well, the way it's i think about it is, you contest. know we're called newman club on campus which i think yeah. can at times be confusing mm-hmm. because we're not just a club we're a ministry sure. um and i have a duty towards the diocese to make sure um you know that i'm doing my best to have a Catholic club for college students to participate in. So it's a club, but it's not a club, right? Like, so right. we can't just be, it's not just elected, but it's, it's you know, anything in ministry is about discernment. Like, um, am I called? Am I called now? Like, what can I offer? Am I mm. ready to offer? There's a lot of students who, you know, would be great leaders in a year or two, right? Sure. That still need that formation and, and still need that time. Um so that's, that's yeah. why we do it that way. And, and the, the positions are more for the 
the college, right? Because they have like I guess rules you it's have to really, follow. It's really in being my mind club. like if you want to serve, serve. Like yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna be like no, you can't. Yeah, yeah. Um. So that's why we have like a couple extra people on sure. the leadership team because I think they we all have something to offer. But the positions really are for the university to Mm -hmm. keep the club status so that we can receive funding so that we can you know have a table so that we can do things on campus yeah that makes a lot of sense Mm -hmm. and and it is kind of twofold it's connected to the college but also connected to the diocese Mm -hmm. in a a ministry way yeah just listen this is slightly off topic um but i i I don't know, I just want to ask, since the two of you have sort of mentioned you're a youth minister here, you're a, you're ministering to the college students at, at Stockton, um, do you ever sit back and kind of think to yourself, it, like we often think of ourselves as we're, we're all lay people, we have a vocation, do you ever think back to the importance of your role as a spiritual minister? I know we're, we're not ordained, but mm-hmm. that, you know, technically I, I'm a ministerial role mm-hmm. as well, but I'm an unusual one in the sense that I have no flock and <laughs> you know, no, no spiritual flock to look after. I, I look after the communications of the diocese. But I mean, for the two of you, do, do you think about that spiritual, you know, component to your lives? I mean, I definitely, it's important to me, not just because of being a campus minister, but also, you know, being a wife and a mother, you know, I want my children you know i think about things a lot and so you know i i tell this story a lot this will give our listeners like a glimpse into who i am but you know my husband when he wasn't my husband and he proposed to me i said the first thing i said was yes and then i said <laughs> immediately after i said oh god what have we done because in that <laughs> moment like i was ex- and my husband said you just don't like change and I was like you're right you know it was good (laughs) but I felt the gravity of that yes that this isn't just oh we love each other let's get married um I felt the gravity of our duty towards one another was to journey to heaven the same when we had our children um you know the gravity that it's my our duty to be the first formators of them and if I'm not living a life you know, where I'm connected to God, where I'm being of service, where I'm being kind, it doesn't matter. And so I I do think about that with the students that, you know, for whatever reason, the Lord has led me to this position and I have a duty, you know, God help me not get in the way. Mm, (laughs) So true. So. Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, Although I told my husband no, but it wasn't out of, (laughs) because I meant the no, I was just like, this is really happening. I was in shock actually. I was like, no, wait, yes, no. And he was like, his face was changing. Like, what do you mean? But um, <laughs> but I agree with you. And I, I often, for myself in the ministry role, so, uh, you know, for those listeners that maybe don't know, it took me a very long time to have a child. And there was 10 years of our marriage that um, I was infertile. And God blessed us with our son um, 10 years into our marriage. Well, in the 11th year, conceiving in the 10th. And during those 10 years, being a youth minister was so important to me and me forming those relationships with the youth. But I looked at it as such a, a spiritual motherhood and continue to today, but it really helped me look at it in the in the lens of a mother to be able to, to care for these kids in the areas of their faith. Mm-hmm. So in wanting your children to get to heaven, um, that's what I'm sure you can agree with this, Allison. That's what we want for every student, for every mm-hmm. youth, for every young adult that comes through our doors or that is to come. And so mm-hmm. we give of ourselves in that way to just share ourselves and our faith with them to be able to to give them in a motherly way guide them towards the faith guide them towards mm-hmm. heaven guide them towards sainthood so that has been mm-hmm. really a big part of, of for me like giving of myself in that ministry yeah, and now absolutely. in a different way balancing with my son as well giving it to him as his true mother you know his, mm-hmm. his birth mother so um so yeah but that, that has been it for me so for for our our students that are here um you know, with the Newman Center, you mentioned retreats, we mentioned service. What is like a typical Newman night like? Or Do you call it Newman nights? Mm-hmm. Is that what you call it? Is it Wednesdays, right? Yeah, the Wednesday nights. Yes. Wednesday nights, not Newman nights, just Wednesday nights. 
I mean, they're, they're meetings. I don't know I if we don't, necessarily call it church. I don't know if we have a church. Yeah, let's just call it Newman Club. Yeah. We do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you coming to Newman? Yeah, okay. like, yeah. It's kind of like a unknown thing that if we say, hey, you coming to Newman Club, it's like, are you coming to Wednesday night? Got like, it. Okay. That's <laughs> so what's a typical Wednesday night like for the campus at Stockton for the, for the ministry? Well, it's always a little bit different. Um, this past semester, this past fall semester, we started um, at the beginning of each meeting. Um, we read a little Bible passage, and then there's a question to um, lead thought and discussion. So then we'll think about that and then discuss in a small group and then come mm. back together and discuss um, what we said in our small group. And then we'll break off into something else. So sometimes we'll have guest speakers. Um, other times we might be watching like a movie, um, some kind of religious movie or something. And other times... You know, we have fun activities for like for Christmas or something. Of course, mm -hmm. always centered around our faith. But yeah, it's it's pretty our leaders different. also lead a lot of the meetings mm -hmm. um, through their own, you know, interests and and research um, and present different materials and, and lead different discussions with their peers. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's always great that that peer leadership. Awesome. So I would say that those are some of the best meetings. Yeah. Yeah. What's like a Thank typical you. one for that? Like, have you led one, Catherine? In that? Uh, I have. Um, wow, well, I can't remember. I know we're going to be talking about some of us just went on SLS. So soon we'll be talking about that. Not this upcoming meeting, but I believe the next one, if I'm remembering correctly. So shortly into the semester. Yeah. Since we just went, it's fresh, fresh in and our S brains. Can you stuff. explain to our viewers a little bit about SLS? OK, so SLS is a conference run by Focus. Uh, every other year and it's um, it's focused on leadership specifically for leaders so yeah we went to Phoenix Arizona uh, nationwide conference nationwide right? conference okay. yes so me and four other students from our Newman Club went and we saw a bunch of different speakers like Father Mike Schmidt, Sister Miriam, Sister Bethany Madonna. Oh, they were all some heavy hitters yeah, there. That's yeah, awesome. It was great. Inspiring too. Definitely, yeah. Um, so yeah, it it pretty much talked about talked a lot about evangelization and mm -hmm. how to reach our fellow peers and like how we can um, all together dive deeper into our faith. Yeah, and it's it's geared towards college college age students. Yeah, uh, other like age groups were there, like campus ministers and stuff. But I think their main focus is for the college, college students. Age students. Yeah, yeah, and it happens over in between the break, in between Christmas. Yes, and and the yeah. second semester, the spring semester. So it, it it allows for you to go. Yeah, we were actually there over New Year's, so that was pretty fun. That, need, yeah. that had to be neat. Yeah. They do have a, they have different tracks now, you know, initially, so Focus is the, I think you said the Fellowship of Catholic University Students. So their initial conferences were strictly for college students, but as, you know, Focus has been around for 21 years now. So a lot of people who were involved initially have graduated and there is also a need in parishes for mm -hmm. evangelization. Mm -hmm. So now they have three different tracks at their conferences. They have one for college students, which is the majority, but there's also a missionary discipleship track, which is for anybody in a parish. Um, and then there's also a campus ministry tra track um, for Catholic campus ministers throughout okay. the country. Wow, great. And Allison, you have a connection to Focus. I think yeah. believe you were a Focus missionary on a I college was. campus for a few years. Tell yeah. us about that and how it maybe it led you to where you are today. Yeah, so, you know, I, I can't talk about Focus without talking about college. When I was in, when I started college, I wasn't necessarily practicing the faith and um, it was pretty much not. And then, you know, long story short, you were I raised Catholic. Though. <laughs> I was raised Catholic. Okay. Um, long story short, I had a profound encounter with the Lord, um, and my life was changed in my freshman year. And that was a, that that encounter happened about February, and so we were going into Lent, and in that Lent that year, um. I sat down in the chapel and I said, I need to do some sort of service after college. Hmm. This is in my journal, I wrote this. Something like net, but not net. Mm. I, I had only heard of net, I had never heard of Focus. Yes, yeah, National Evangelization um, Team, net, yeah. And, you know, so that was, you know, I think that was my sophomore year of college, excuse me. And, um, you know, so as time went on, my senior year of college rolls around and my spiritual director said that, you know, 
apply for Focus. So long story short, I become a Focus missionary um, because, you know, through that encounter with the Lord, I gave a yes. And I said, this is where I have peace. And so I knew that the Lord's will and his desire for my life was the only way I was going to find peace in my life long term and happiness. So I became a Focus missionary for a couple of years. And that's um it was really beautiful, a beautiful time of formation. I served in Kansas and then in Washington, D.C. Um, on the college campuses? Of Yeah, so in Kansas, I was at Benedictine College in oh. Atchison, Kansas. Well, that, that's a great start right there. Yeah. That's a great college. Um, yeah. We have several of our, our students who have graduated from our high school youth ministry attend there, and they just rave about it. They love it. You know, it was a great school. It was a great opportunity, and the Lord did things for me in my heart that year that he could have only done if I was living in Kansas, mm. but I will never live in Kansas. <laughs> um, I don't much, hear too many people say, I want to live in Kansas. I'm too much of a Maybe. New Jersey girl yeah. for that, yeah. you know? Um, and then my second year, I was asked to serve at the University of Maryland in College Park. Oh, nice. Yeah, and so through that time, you know, working with college students, I saw a need, um, I saw such brokenness and I said, I don't have the tools in my toolbox. So I went and got a master's in counseling. I worked as a therapist for a number of years. Um, and then full circle, here I am back in campus ministry. Wow. You know, and you've been there three years now. Yeah. This is my, th I'm in my third year. Yep. How's your toolbox? You know, <laughs> it feels more and more empty like, like ah. the, the more you know i know it's more and more filled but you know yeah. the more you learn the more you know like There's how so much you don't so know yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know and, and the needs are always changing yeah. you know that's where we come in to help <laughs> it is true so do you see a lot of like um peer-to-peer -peer leadership and like mentoring or bringing others into the faith on the campus between the two of you and being in this leadership role um so as far as like leadership goes and see I don't know about like I don't really know how do you have any input on this <laughs> uh, I don't know I think relationships like the relationships we build are important especially um, assuming that those on eboard are a little more knowledgeable and formated not to say like we're super knowledgeable yeah, or anything no, but, but that's part of why you were exactly in that, in that so I would that say position. yeah I would say that relationship between like eboard and the rest of our peers is very important especially like maybe for those who come occasionally so and like you know we try to push them to come more often so it's really nice to see when they do come and especially go on retreats and stuff so yeah and then one of the other things in regards to like peer-to-peer -peer is like for instance Allie like we one of the things that me and Allie have discussed recently is that uh, like I'm I'm typically like a decent amount older than most of the students that mm -hmm. go to So you're not your club. typical college yeah, track yeah. four I'm, years. I'm about to be 26. Okay. So one of the things that like me and Allie really bond over the fact is that I'm essentially that bridge to the students mm -hmm. for her. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how we really bounce with each other is like, I feel like me, like me and Allie have a relationship that's a little bit different than her and the students. And that's not a bad thing. You know, it's just one of those things that it kind of connects her to the students a little bit more, which is very helpful to, you know, to both of us. So I think that there are some students as to how I explain it. There are some students who will only talk to me, mm. you know, and will only open up and share with me. And there are some students who will never talk to me mm. or Father Raymond. They just you know they won't and that's where we need the student leaders to come in you know i would say that the vast majority might talk to me might talk to the students you know um but we you know so the students have to be present for the for some others and i have to be present for some others that we yeah. all have a role to play yeah that you makes know, sense that you bring, you've mentioned father raymond twice now he's the chap he wanted chaplain. to be here but he had he also has another job at a parish so there was a parish event tonight okay. that he had to be at have you, have you had the opportunity to meet father raymond yet Karen? i i i've talked to him on the phone he's when we were character. scheduling our thing yeah the, the short phone call conversation i gathered that i enjoyed it in well, his message but okay bye like i was like <laughs> Okay, all right. Well, all right. It was very funny. He's he's Filipino and he just came to the United States maybe a year yeah, or two ago. And when he first came here, he did not know how to drive. And his first assignment was that he was assigned to two entities and they could 
pretty much could not have been farther apart. So he's <laughs> had to guy. learn. He's <laughs> had to learn how to drive, and he, he's such a sweetheart. In New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, in New Jersey. <laughs> so he's he's a sweetheart of a guy. But <laughs> talk about his driving someday. Oh. But but in terms of uh, the ca the campus ministry itself, mm -hmm. how does Father Raymond, as a chaplain, sort of interact with yourself and the, and the students? Father Raymond, you know, we, he's our part-time chaplain, so he offers, you know, mass on Sunday and stays and to eat with us and, and shares that fellowship. Um, and he's also present on Mondays on campus, um, so he offers daily mass and has lunch with students afterwards. And then he's present for all of our Newman Club meetings. So um, I would say it's the same. You know, he comes to our retreats. You know, he makes himself available, you know, as he can. Yeah. Does he offer spiritual direction as well for the students if they wanted it? Um, you know, I'm not sure about no. that. Is he's he's fairly new though. Yeah, right? he's yeah. fairly he's been with us for a year. You know, I'm okay. I'm certain like he's he offers confession each week, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm I'm certain. I just thinking back to some of my that's just my not something like I don't yeah. ask yeah, that yeah. question. Yeah. Like, are you? You know, I'm sure if if students were wanted to talk to him, uh -huh. he would he would be available for that. Got it. Okay. Um, that always ends up being a very personal request. Anytime that I a mm. few of the priests I've have talked about, I, I find that it's not necessarily something that's advertised, but when somebody comes to you and asks them, they yeah. they do feel like. Um, encouraged that they'll, sure. they'll they'll give you an idea. Yeah, yeah. No, I just remember it being a big part of my mm -hmm. experience through Newman, so that's why I asked. But you know, every student is different, and it was probably a need that I a big need that I had, and I still yeah. need today as a person is to you have know, a, a sp regular spiritual director. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking recently about uh, podcast episodes that we should focus on. A spiritual direction might be a nice one as well. That's something we look. Don't... I gave you two already. This all right. This well, episode. you keep talking, and I'll keep thinking. It'll be fine. <laughs> the um, so uh, I was going to ask you a question Father related Raymond. to that. Nope, it had something completely new and it just popped out of my Sorry. head. Sorry, so that's okay. That's fine. I came up with an idea for a whole other episode. I feel good about it. Don't worry about it. So the uh, <laughs> you know just in terms of you know oh I oh, I found it. it came back. How do you recruit students to come into campus uh -huh. ministry? Good like, question. Thanks. No problem. Like like I mean do you you know literally you mentioned the table them? I know but <laughs> yeah so I would say that you know. Our main outreach happens at the beginning of each semester. Stockton has something called the Get Involved Fair. So it's over two days. Mm. Um, and so we, we're present there at a table. Um, and my philosophy is just to have conversations. You know, I, I don't really see Campus Ministry or Newman Club as something to be recruited to. You know, people who have chosen Stockton, the vast majority, have not chosen Stockton to join the Catholic Club. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm not, that was the um, motivating factor. Yeah, that's, you know, I do have one student who that was. They got accepted to Stockton and they made sure that there was a Newman Club there. That's great. So, as um, somebody probably well versed in their faith going into yeah, college. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so I'm sorry, I so lost you had my train the conversations of thought. with so, them at the table. Yeah, I think get involved fair is just to have conversations, and you know, people will be like, "Oh, what are you?" And I say, "We're the Catholic Club on campus," and they're like, "Oh, well, we have a Catholic club. We have a, <laughs> you know." And they're like, "Oh, I'm Catholic. Well, great. Mm. Why don't you come to our meeting tonight? Mm -hmm. You know, we're having Chick Fil A or." You know, whatever. Oh, I'd always get them. Oh, man. Um, you don't make that meal. <laughs> yes, I don't make that meal. Um, Neither does Joseph. <laughs> and, you know, some people, if I have, like, a, a, a longer conversation or a deeper conversation, I make a note, like we talked about, mm. and I'll follow up later that day. Hey, I really enjoyed meeting you. Mm. And it... it and I say it on a podcast, so it sounds forced, but it, I, it's genuine. It's natural and genuine, I yeah. genuinely want people to be a part of this, not because, so I can be like, oh, my club is growing. Yes. But because yeah. I believe that Jesus is the answer to the question on each of our hearts. Mm -hmm. And so I want people to come. It's, mm -hmm. it's not... I don't care about it's numbers. Pure. It's, it's pure. not. Yeah. So I just try to follow up. You know, I try to make those invitations. You know, I met Catherine at the Get Involved Fair, and I I didn't know her. Now, I actually, my first impression was, oh, she's not totally not going to be involved. Mm. You know, she oh, said, but she wow. said at the Good. table, you know, 
I'm, I really like retreats. And so when it was time to do retreats, I said, I got to text that girl, yeah, you know, and nice. invite her on the retreat because that's what she likes. I, you know? She does. So. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. <laughs> and look you know, you're a great you blessing. Today. Yeah. yeah. You, you're, I'm sure, such a strong role model around there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Catherine, I get a lot of good ideas from, you know, one of the things she didn't say when she talked about meetings was <laughs> she did lead a meeting last semester with Hannah on... Um, Catholic social teaching regarding the environment. And so her and and a few of the other students had created this idea to sell reusable straws for Christmas and to donate the money to Catholic Relief Services for their efforts. And, and, and it was completely and them. I did nothing. Awesome. I didn't order the straws. I didn't reserve the table. <laughs> You know, well, let's talk about Catherine a little bit. She yeah. also it was the uh, proponent <laughs> behind our re, our water bottle dispenser, like we, water cooler dispenser that we now have in our youth office. Just, I could tell that's a passion of yours, just from what we talked about here today, <laughs> which I is mean, great. I guess you could say that. And you know what, though, it's great because you're a college student, you're of that mindset, and that is really a big, in a good way, trend to help save the environment at this yeah. point in time. And 2020 where people are very concerned about that and and we can use that for the good in Catholic social teaching so that was great. Can you give us a little bit about what your presentation was? Um, so me and my friend Hannah who's also on eboard we went to a Catholic Relief Services training in well it was was it St. Joe's University I think in uh, Pennsylvania in probably. Philly probably mm -hmm. yeah um, so we went to that training and um, a huge part of their thing is, you know, being environmentally friendly, especially in the communities they work with. So we kind of took that back and we presented on, on what we learned, a big part of it being being environmentally conscious. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we just use so much plastic yeah. <laughs> to talk about the reusable straws. How did, and and how, how small changes can make a difference. Sure. You know. How did the sale of the straws go? It went pretty well. Yeah. How, how we, many did you sell? Oh, I don't know. We raised two hundred dollars. Wow. Okay, cool. In, off of straws, and so off it's of not re like a big inflation. They were like a dollar a piece or two dollars. Yeah. I think we sold them for two dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So we sold a hundred like straws. Accessories. No, then they're like accessories yeah. that they bought. They were like different prices as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, somewhere around. Accessories there. to straws. I love it. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, like the cleaning thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the case. Yeah. 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 But I mean, I over about eight hours. hours. <laughs> it was like about eight hours oh, of college wow. students. We, that we that raised. That changes it. That's great. Two hundred dollars for reusable straws. But you know that makes a big difference. And you know I. I love it because it was such a student-run initiative, and I really believe in small changes. You know, small changes affect the environment, but mm -hmm. small changes also affect our faith life sure. and our confidence and our ability to do things. So those small little things that we do, you know, their effort in that really gave me life, you yeah. know, to see that leadership, to see that fruit in their fire. Mm. Um and their passion for it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Good job, Catherine. Thanks. <laughs> really impressive. I'm curious, uh, how much of the Pope's uh, uh, exhortation, Laudato Si, was part of your formation in that regard? I am unfamiliar. Uh, I'm sure <laughs> that is fine. It just means that Catholic uh, Relief Services did their, did their job. Yeah. Uh, Pope Francis has an entire book dedicated to protecting creation. Oh, I see. Yeah, so I came highly out. encourage you to, to read it. 20, I will look into it. Uh, no, I, th earlier than that, before I came to the diocese, oh, okay. it came out. So probably four People or five years ago. People are still talking about it. I've heard a lot yeah. about it myself. But it's basically care of the environment. So it's I highly recommend it. I see. Check I will out. check it you out, definitely. It. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guarantee you, it, the stuff you learned at, through Catholic Relief Services probably was directly take uh, uh, offered up mm -hmm. in, in that mm -hmm. exhortation. That makes so sense. Check it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah but you'll see it. Uh, he, he comments on it all the time. And it's something that uh, it's it's very logical and natural and very, it almost obvious all the little things that we can do. It's like, like what you were saying, little things we can do to, to improve our, our earth. It's perfectly fine. The um, wow, this has been the I you know we're we're about to wrap up soon. I tell you, I, I have to say I've done a few podcasts and it's been my quickest one yet. The conversation so. in terms of how yeah I yeah know. I look down I'm like oh my gosh we have only two minutes left. Well, I, I, we've this is probably the second or third um, campus ministry conversation we've had. Mm -hmm. Actually, famously, Allie was on one that was the most butchered uh, episode we ever did. Oh. I completely <laughs> screwed up the sound recording. Oh, it no. was horrible and it was it actually it was the trip down. I think it was a border trip, wasn't it? Oh, probably. Yeah, yep. it was the first border trip, and 
the, the the young men and women we spoke to were so passionate and so Aww. engaged and they had these, came back with this. these great stories <laughs> and I listened back to the recording and realized I didn't have the settings on right Aww. and uh, oh, it was terrible not I, today though I, I, but their stories were so good that I thought to put it up there but it was virtually unlistenable oh, uh, it, it, it hurt my heart oh, it really did it, it made, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's why you're back <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think, did we do one specifically with you once when I had first started yep, yeah I was yeah, yeah. on it oh yeah, we like, you're a three timer yeah we Ali, yeah, yeah, she's. I, I, I nominate for her for all sorts of committee jobs oh. and stuff like that. Ali's a great. You know, uh oh. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's the, 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 that's the problem. Is people I meet people and realize how great they are. Yep. Much like Carrie, yeah, who's now doing tell me this two twice. separate projects <laughs> for me. <laughs> So oh, Allie will have her own though. podcast in no time. Oh, right. no. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be my favorite guest. <laughs> the uh, But no, it's true. I love it. So yeah, anyway. Same here. Thank you all for, for coming up north yes, to chat you. with us for a this little bit. This is great. Carrie, thank you for putting this all together. Yeah, it was wonderful. No, I'm really thankful to have you guys. Newman is a great deep place in my heart and to hear all of your passions and your your love for it is really it, it's so edifying to hear it and i hope our listeners if you know someone who's in college now recommend them to check on campus to see it i guarantee you there's likely a some sort of mm-hmm. campus ministry for or newman club for uh for young catholics on the absolutely college yeah keep them involved in their faith in the college years so important to our listeners and your kids your grandkids your neighbors your friends keep them involved in their faith mm-hmm. Well, thank you all for listening, and we'll chat with you next week. God bless. Bye.